It's long been apparent to us that Boston Whaler has more in-house design infrastructure than most builders in class. For that reason, we decided to visit the Boston Whaler facility in Edgewater, Florida to get an inside look at what really goes on in the gestation of a new boat. There seems to be no cookie cutter methodology, but rather an intense process that involves seeking input from customers, dealers, veteran fishermen, and avid boaters. Those observations are initiated and then distilled at Boston Whaler's in-house design team, all the way up to the naval architects and engineers. It all starts with an eye towards collaboration. Let's take a look at the process. For starters, it's easy to say that a company listens to customer feedback, but at Boston Whaler, it seems to be taken to another level, a level that I wanted to see for myself. When designing a new model, the team starts with existing customers of a previous model or a similar size and type of model. Boston Whaler sends their own designers to conduct the interviews on camera and get feedback. They pick his or her brain as they walk through the boat together. What do you like? What don't you like? And most importantly, what would you like to see changed? And then these videos are brought back for review. When reviewing these videos, the team makes notes on every topic and correlates those notes into a cohesive plan, and this forms the basis of the new design. Then, when a new set of designs are drawn up, Boston Wheeler will again reach out to customers, fly them down to the plant, and go over the new ideas. It's a sort of what-do-you-think focus group. Take a look at this new outrage. Notice the newly designed bow? This is the process where it came from. Another customer found that he had nowhere to put his bags on his 370 Outrage. He had to put them on the berth, and when he accelerates, they end up on the deck. His solution was to just place a 2x4 to hold it all in place. Whaler, however, created a flip seat back with the same results, plus non-skid surfaces on top for holding more items. Another example? Offshore fishermen wanted a dinette table down below that was larger than the usual convertible versions, while still other owners wanted the island V-berth instead of a table, and no one liked the hassle of filler cushions. The design team said, well, what if we did all three things in the same design? And just like that, the concept of having both a large dinette table with a comfortable backrest that could be converted into a double berth without filler cushions was born. After countless hours of design and engineering, this clever arrangement emerged in the 345 Conquest. And it's a rare company that ensures that a customer isn't feeling as if, hey, I'm not really being listened to. Boston Whaler listens, and they respond and nothing's off the table when it comes to meeting the demands of the customer. So not only is there collaboration within Boston Whaler, there's also collaboration externally with outside vendors to get their products integrated into the new designs. Take the windlass for example. Boston Whaler doesn't make these, an outside vendor does, but they need to be designed into the architecture of a new boat. The SureShade retractable awning is another example. Every component needs to be designed into the layout of the hardtop so it's self-contained and protected in a harsh environment. And sometimes the outside vendor helps dictate the design. Mercury Marine, which is also owned by the Brunswick Corporation, is involved in every new design right from the start. And that way the boat's bottom design and basic specifications can take maximum advantage of the strengths of the engine available for it. This level of collaboration also manifests itself with things like testing the propellers, engine placement, and boat weight distribution. Another example of this collaboration is the Mercury joystick system. Boston Whaler was extensively involved in the testing on that product, and as such, hull designs were tweaked to get the most efficiency from the installation. A win for Whaler, Mercury, and the consumer. In addition to tweaking the boat, the product is also dialed into the boat. The joystick isn't programmed for all 30-foot boats, it's programmed to all specific models. And the programming changes from one model to the next. That's a distinct difference that becomes obvious to someone like myself that drives so many. Now the fact that Boston Whaler has all its staff under one roof allows that collaboration to continue internally. When a product is developed, the ability exists for all to experience it and then get direct feedback on how the product works, whether it's a boat or a component of the boat. There's a feedback loop and interaction that ripples through the whole company. The regional manager can just walk over to the designer and give feedback from the dealers who spoke to the customer and the team becomes one cohesive unit. Well, clearly, what we're seeing is that there are several processes that are involved in making Boston Whaler the respected brand that it is. It turns out they're not only designing boats, they're designing experiences. They're designing brand loyalty. And that's my look at the design and engineering team at Boston Whaler. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.